The Channel 4 I team investigation exposes shocking video and photograph of what's apparently happening in our prisons. Inmates having a good time while your tax dollars pay for their food and housing. And perhaps the most stunning part of all of it is how the Channel 4 I team caught them. Well, we uncovered all this simply by getting on Facebook. And you're probably thinking, well, you have to have a phone or a computer to get on Facebook, and inmates don't have either behind bars. That's the problem. These inmates are operating the pages, not someone on the outside. And what they're showing themselves doing is infuriating victims and has the state facing real questions. Prison's rough, right? You're in a cell all day, the food isn't good, little to no communication with the outside, right? I believe I'm smoking better than everybody. Well, welcome to Prison Life 2013. Drugs, smokes, mounds of snacks, cash, getting tattoos, the freedom to make music, even set things on fire using forbidden technology to show it all off on Facebook. This is the penitentiary here. Back in the relaxer, you know what I'm talking about? Relaxing, eating pizza, getting high while you're paying for them to be here. Anybody who sees those videos, they're going to be sickened by it. They're going to be angered by it. And we're not talking about just a few inmates who figured out how to get on Facebook. Not 10, not 20, not 50. A Channel 4 I team investigation found more than 100 inmates in Tennessee prisons with Facebook pages. Their profile pictures taken inside their cells. Pages the inmates are operating from behind bars to communicate with family, friends, fellow gang members, even with inmates in other prisons. I guarantee you that when the commissioner sees this, there's going to be a reckoning, and there should be. You know, these are murderers, rapists, and other convicted criminals, and they appear to be having a pretty good time in prison. And I don't like it, but it's a problem that we face today, and it's something that we work hard on every day. And once you see the videos, you'll see why crime victims advocates like Verna Wyatt are infuriated. What we've uncovered is like a highlight reel of audacity. That's the world right there. That's convicted murderer Rivera Peoples. Here's the contraband iPhone he uses to make the videos. Listen to his buddy talk about getting high behind bars. I believe I'm smoking better than everybody. Then he asked Peoples about how much money he's collected while he's been in prison. How much money you got, Phil? Thousands? I got thousands. I'm a thousand. I'm definitely a thousand. And he's not alone. Here's a photo we found of an inmate holding $200, and another inmate shared the same photo on his Facebook page, just like you would share a picture you liked. But let's get back to the videos. You see me? Peoples and his criminal pals are back. This time, it's daytime in the prison yard, telling everyone on Facebook that life behind bars, not so tough. Between me and you, man, you feel me? This ain't half bad. There's video of inmates watching TV, singing, and rapping. It was so real, it fills me with this nausea. <laughs> but none of that compares to convicted burglar Martez Wright, operating his Facebook page from inside the Shelby County Correctional Center, posting videos of his exploits while in a Memphis jail. First, he shows off what he says is marijuana. Then he talks about the side effects of smoking loud, a slang term for weed. Man, everybody in here on this stupid loud. We all hungry. And to satisfy his munchies, take a look at his spread. Man, we hungry. We finna get ready to eat them feast. Scrumptious items that we get that we eat on a daily basis. What they're doing is breaking the law. They're rubbing everyone's face in it. There's also a real criminal element to all this. The Channel 4 I team examined more than 100 communications and found this. Two inmates in two different prisons having a conversation on the Facebook wall. One saying, I need to get with someone at your prison. Send me your number. And the other inmate posts the number to call. So here are two inmates communicating with each other in two different prisons. Well, it is a problem. Obviously, this is instant communication. Assistant Commissioner Tony Parker is in charge of security in Tennessee's prisons. <laughs> How can a guy set a shirt on fire without your correctional officers knowing? You have one officer and 128 inmates in a prototypical housing unit. It appears that they have took something and covered the door. Parker looked at every photo 
and every video we found. This has to be embarrassing for you. I, it's something I don't like, obviously. As soon as the Channel 4 I team brought our findings to the state, they immediately launched investigations in 14 prisons across the state, finding 53 cell phones, drugs, and a deadly weapon. 70 inmates now face disciplinary actions for having Facebook pages, and their Facebook pages now shut down. All this year, we've been showing you our investigation into the party behind bars, how Tennessee inmates are using cell phones to document their wild behavior. We showed you how innocent people are being harassed and how dangerous deals were being made between prisons. Well, a few months ago, I got an interesting proposition from an inmate inside Riverbend Maximum Security Prison. Did I want to see how easily they smuggle in cell phones? That offer led to this Channel 4 I-Team investigation. If Riverbend Maximum Security Prison is so secure, how did an inmate send the Channel 4 I-Team these pictures from inside? How did we have dozens of conversations while he's locked up in here? You and I right now are talking and you're in Riverbend. I'm sitting in my cell on a cell phone talking to you doing this interview. The answer is obvious. Inmate David Faulkner gets cell phones smuggled to him. And we're about to show you how he says he gets them. It all started in September when I started recording conversations with David Faulkner. He sent me pictures of his cell, the prison, his stash, his tobacco, and then this note that gave instructions of how Faulkner was to get another phone. 400 bucks wrapped in plastic, 200 bucks extra for weed. Let me know ASAP before I leave tonight. Signed, Simmons. Who is Simmons? Faulkner says he's a correctional officer. Over the last 18 months, I've probably bought 20 phones from him, probably a thousand packs of cigarettes, probably at least a pound of weed. Hoping that coming forward with what he knows would get him moved out of Riverbend into another prison, Faulkner enlisted the help of his fiance, Sandy Jordan, to give all his information to the State Department of Correction. They basically all just kind of laughed at me. They, they didn't, you know, they didn't feel that there was any credence to this. So Jordan and Faulkner began to work with the Channel 4 I team to gather more information, starting with texts of how to arrange getting a phone inside the prison. You know, a guard was texting me during his shift. When Jordan suggested they meet at her hotel near the prison, the text reply, too close to work, that's way too risky. That's when Jordan made a bold move and recorded the conversation with the guard. I have a lot to lose to do something like this. You take a risk like I do. I'll be honest with you, it scares me. We both have a lot to lose. And it can be anything I want, phone, weed, you know, anything that he needs, right? Yeah, yeah. The cost for the contraband, $3,000. I said, I don't mind helping him out, but because of what it is, it, it has to cost him because of, of, the, of the risk that I take. Then another request by text. I want to know what you look like. Jordan responded, and this picture was sent in return. The TBI confirms that's Kevin Simmons, a correctional officer at Riverbend Prison. When the Channel 4 I team brought all this to investigators with the Department of Correction, they contacted the district attorney, who called in the TBI. That's when the TBI asked Jordan for her help. I wanted to make sure that they knew that we had this kind of leverage that they needed to act. The TBI confirms to the Channel 4 I team they took Jordan to this hotel in Mount Juliet and she arranged for Simmons to meet her. Inside the hotel, the TBI confirms they gave Jordan $3,000, a cell phone and tobacco, to give to Simmons. And Jordan says as soon as the transaction was made, TBI agents moved in. They came into the room as soon as he had the money, placed a gun straight to his head, which was quite shocking to me. Afterwards, Simmons was fired by the Department of Correction. The TBI's case is now in the hands of the district attorney. After repeatedly trying to reach Simmons at his last known address and by phone, I just spoke with him this afternoon. Simmons denies writing this note and says he didn't intend to deliver the phone to David Faulkner. For now, that's all he will say. Jordan says the TBI has their work cut out for them. I believe they want to get the network within the prison because there's more people involved.